What's going on all my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you're having a wonderful day. This is a very highly requested series. I am finally bringing it to you after finishing the ATITs and we are gonna start discussing NLEX style questions and theories as well as help you get through nursing school. We're gonna make nursing school easy and help you pass it like a boss. So today we're beginning with the foundations of nursing and we're gonna be discussing pharmacokinetics. So pharmacokinetics, what exactly does that mean? Well, it's what the body does to the drug that we ingest or is injected from start to finish. So there's really four big components. And when it comes to NCLEX, really think about ADME, A-D-M-E, ADME. So we have absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. So let's break down what these mean. So to begin, we're going to look at the first part of our four components. That's our ADME, or A-D-M-E, and we're going to be talking about absorption. So when it comes to absorption, the medication material makes its way in to our systemic arterial circulation. That's where we need it, right? But there are factors that are going to affect that rate of absorption. So we have solubility and we have route. So when it comes to solubility, we have fat soluble um, medications and of course those are going to be injected into our subcutaneous tissues. Why? Because if it's fat soluble it needs to be near other fatty cells and tissues. That's why we always give it into our subcutaneous area. We have water soluble medications. Those really can be given in a variety of ways and it'll still be absorbed regardless of the route that you give it. When it comes to route, that's the time that it takes to get into that arterial circulation and there's several different kinds of routes. You have our oral PO medication route, subcutaneous medication route, sublingual route, inhaled medication route, intramuscular medication route, rectal medication route, as well as our intravenous IV medication route. So let's break all of these down and see how all of these routes affect our rate of absorption. So let's look at our different forms of routes. So our PO oral medication is where we begin. That is the slowest rate of absorption because it has that first pass metabolism phenomenon, which we're gonna discuss a little bit later. But as we know, when we have a medication and we swallow it orally, it goes down into our stomach and then gets processed by our liver and sent out through the venous circulation to the heart. The heart then circulates to the lungs, back to the heart, and then it is sent out to that arterial circulation where it needs to go. So it's got a much longer way to get where it needs to be. When it comes to the subcutaneous medications, they do have slower absorption and it can take approximately 24 hours for that medication to be completely absorbed. Sublingual is faster than our oral PO routes because it skips the stomach and the liver because it's not ingested. Inhaled medications is even a faster route because again, it skips that stomach that liver, those veins, and that initial cardiac circulation. When it comes to our intramuscular medications, it is also a much faster route of absorption due to the greater supply of blood vessels within our skin. Subcutaneous routes are gonna be a little bit slower, our intramuscular routes will be faster. Rectal medications are also a faster route. Why? Because it skips two thirds of that first pass metabolism and will reach that circulation with less compromise to the medication concentration that we'll talk about a little bit later. And lastly, our fastest route of absorption is our intravenous IV medications because it skips that stomach and that liver and it gets directly where it needs to go. So let's talk about that first pass metabolism phenomenon. So when it comes to oral absorption, we know that we swallow a medication. It begins with absorption in our stomach. It's metabolized within the liver, and that metabolized medication product is reduced to its most therapeutic effects. So how do we compensate for the reduction in our therapeutic effects? So this can be done one of two ways. We can increase the oral dosing of the medication. If that's not a possibility, then we can provide the medication through a different route, such as either intravenous or inhaled. It's important to note that with sublingual medications, they take a different route as they are not swallowed, but they are absorbed into that mucosal membrane. Next, let's move on to our second portion of our four components, our AD, we're moving on to that D, and our ADME. And D stands for distribution. So medication materials have been absorbed and they make their way into our targeted organs or various body compartments. 
So our targeted organs is where medication's intended effects will take place. So for example, if the medication works on the heart, then the heart would be the targeted destination, right? So we have our intracellular fluid, our extracellular fluid, our body plasma, fat, we talked about our fat soluble medications, as well as additional fluids. Um, we have faster distribution to the heart, kidneys, and liver, and a slower distribution to other organs such as our skin and our muscles because they're not as vascular. So what influencers are gonna affect distribution? Well, we talked about one before. So we have solubility of medication. So different medications have different solubility, making it difficult for the medication to get where it is intended. Protein binding is a big one. Some medications must be attached to a protein for the medication to be delivered throughout the body. Uh, blood flow, a decrease in cardiac output can greatly affect getting the medication to the intended location. We need to address a lack of volume prior to giving a medication if there is a volume issue such as hypovolemia because if you're hypovolemic, the medication is going to get to where it needs to be as quickly because it doesn't have the fluid to get it there. Next, let's move on to our third component of our ADME and that is metabolism. So that mainly takes place in the liver and it is a two-step process. So step one is activation. We need to activate the medication so that can work throughout the body. If it doesn't get activated, it doesn't work. Lastly, the step two is excretion. That's removing the medication from the body. If the medication doesn't metabolize, it cannot be excreted, causing an increase in the medication forming throughout the system and that could be bad. Moving on to our last pharmacokinetic step, and that is excretion. So that's how the medication is removed from the system. So it can be done one of two ways. It can be done through the hepatobiliary system that's metabolized in the liver. It excretes medications into the bile and is then thus removed in our stool. And then we have our kidney system, which filters inside the glomerulus, goes into our nephrons, into our collecting duct, and then then is removed through our urine. So what influencers will affect excretion? So there's two factors that will affect our excretion, and that is our low glomerular filtration rate, or GFR, as well as damage to the liver. So when it comes to our GFR, it estimates how much blood passes through the glomeruli every minute. So the glomeruli are tiny filters in the kidneys that help filter waste from our blood. So if the glomeruli are not filtering blood, the kidneys aren't functioning appropriately, thus less medication is being excreted through the kidneys and being that it's less medication being excreted, that concentration of medication is gonna continuously rise causing toxicity. The same thing happens with our liver. If the liver isn't functioning appropriately, then less medication is being excreted, causing that medication to build in concentration and leading to toxicity. So how do we compensate for that reduction in excretion, I wonder? So if we know that there is damage to our liver and damage to our kidneys, then the only thing that we can do is decrease the dose or decrease the dose frequency to avoid toxicity in our patients. So let's talk a little bit about medication clearance. So it's defined as the pharmacokinetic measurement of the volume of plasma from which a substance is completely removed. And that's really just a big fancy way of saying how quickly the medication is cleared from the system. So what influencers affect excretion? So we have the concentration of medication in our plasma as well as our glomerular filtration rate that we talked about before, GFR. So the higher the medication accumulation, the faster the system will wanna clear that medication. That's our concentration of medication in our plasma. When it comes to our glomerular filtration rate, if we know that the glomeruli are not filtering appropriately and our kidneys are not working appropriately, then the medication becomes less excreted, potentially leading to toxicity. So in order for us to understand medication clearance, we have to understand the timing. And this is done one of four different ways. We have to understand our half-life, our onset, peak, and duration. So to begin with our half-life, that's the length of time required for the concentration of medication to decrease to half of its starting dose in the body. 
So as we know, the body metabolizes and excretes our medication, so we need to get at least halfway through that medication. So the longer half-life requires less medication, and a shorter half-life would require more medication, right? Which just kind of makes sense. When it comes to onset, that's the duration of time it takes for a medication's effect to become effective. Peak is when the concentration of medication is at its highest and most strongest effect, and duration is the length of time the medication is effective. So there's potentially four effects of medication administration. That's therapeutic effects, side effects, adverse effects, and toxic effects. So let's break all of these down. So when it comes to therapeutic effects, that's the expected response that we want from our medication. So if we give a medication for pain, we expect that the patient's pain is gonna be reduced. Side effects is the predictable effects from that medication. So as you know, one of the most common side effects is nausea. If you look at most of your medications, you're gonna see nausea listed as a potential side effect. So that would be a predictable effect that we know would happen to our patients. Adverse effects are negative effects related to a severe response to a medication. So Cushing syndrome from prednisone administration can be caused and would be considered an adverse effect. If you don't understand Cushing syndrome or prednisone medication administration, I highly, highly recommend that you check out those videos. I'll leave some links down below as well as up here in the corner. Toxic effects is the excessive amount of medication that is left in our system, right? So long-term intake of medication that accumulates in the system either through excessive ingestion, so we have our patients that take too much medication, such as our elderly who sometimes forget, or a damaged system is causing that toxic effect to occur because it can't excrete that medication either through our kidneys or our liver, right? So it's important to know what the medication's half-life is so that we can decrease those toxic effects if they occur. So some key takeaways that I want you to take away from this lecture is that pharmacokinetics is what the body does to the drug from start to finish. Absorption is the medication material and how it makes its way to that systemic arterial circulation. Distribution is that medication material that has been absorbed and is making its way toward the targeted organs or various body compartments. Metabolism starts the medication's activation and excretion process. And of course, excretion is how the medication is removed from the system. I hope that this video was helpful for you in passing your nursing exams like a boss. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure that you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, as well as here on YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe as well as like this video. I also have a website at www.nursechung.com where I will have NCLEX style questions as well as additional resources with each of my videos. So make sure that you check that out. But until next time, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I will speak with you all again soon. Bye.